Good morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12 through 15. The Bible says, A worthless person, a wicked man, goes about with crooked speech, winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, points with his finger, with perverted heart devises evil, continually sowing discord. Therefore, Calamity will come upon him suddenly. In a moment, he will be broken beyond healing. We continue our study in book one, authored by Solomon to his son. Chapters one through nine are written in the form of an oracle, a public theatrical performance. As we study it, as you read it, as you meditate on it, think of it as a public performance given by Solomon for his son to witness. This outline provides a way for us to keep track of where we are working in the larger oracle. Today, we continue working through the section described by many as the four teachings. In today's episode, we will draw our attention to the third of these four teachings. Each of these four teachings has connecting words that sequence them together. As you can see on the screen, the first and second teachings are connected by the subject of sleep. The connection between the second and third teaching is found in the words robber, armed man, as in with a weapon, worthless person, and wicked man. The connection between the third and fourth teaching is found in that the wicked man is always sowing discord. In today's episode, we will draw our attention to the connection between teaching number two and number three regarding the similarities between robber, an armed man, a worthless person, and a wicked man. The connection between teaching number two and number three in using these four words suggests they are all used to describe a single type of bad actor. Four viewpoints of the same scoundrel. Let's take a few moments to think through these four words and what they mean. Robber, as shown in the ESV, comes from the Hebrew word halak, which is often used in the Old Testament 1,545 times, as a matter of fact. Its most basic meaning is to walk. However, in different contexts and with different vowel points, it takes on a variety of meanings. In the case of our text, it means one that travels, and by metaphor, what we might call a highwayman or bandit. Think of the thieves that fell on the man that was helped by the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 and 33, and you'll get the idea. The ESV rendering robber is a good translation. Armed man is translated from two words in the Hebrew. The first, megana, which means shield. Its root word, ganon, means to hedge about or protect. The second word in the Hebrew is the word man, esh. The two words are meant to depict a man that is armed and ready for conflict. Thus, the ESV translation, armed man. Worthless person is a compound word in Hebrew, belial. It means without profit or worthless. The two root words mean failure and ascend, that is, failure to rise to the level of anticipated accomplishment. The man of Belial is someone who openly rejects the rules of society and thus undermines normal social relations. We might use the American phrase, failure to launch. Wicked man, like armed man, is actually two words in Hebrew. Man is simply the word man. Wicked is translated from the word aven, which literally means to pant or breathe hard for no good reason. It speaks to wasted effort and nothing having been accomplished. Think of it as work with no value. The wicked man, similar to the worthless man, has failed to reach his presumed potential. We went through each of these to demonstrate the composite description Solomon has in mind for us to consider. He is describing for us a man that is a waste of space, a man that has failed to rise to his potential, a man that has no appreciable value, a worthless man. Solomon will now characterize this man of no appreciable value by describing his actions. This is how you can recognize such a person. He first describes this man as one who goes about with crooked speech. Think of this as opposite of a straight talker. Crooked speech is communication that is intended to mislead and confuse. It is not clear, but at best ambiguous. Allow the image on your screen to depict in your mind what it looks like 
when on the one hand a person speaks clearly in straight language, in ways that are not ambiguous, where the direction and information is absolutely clear. On the other hand, imagine a person's words so convoluted, so ambiguous, so purposely misleading that you have no idea what they are saying. The result is that you are misled. This is the first characterization of the worthless man. You cannot trust what he says. Solomon's second characterization is that this worthless man winks with his eyes. It is interesting that this Hebrew mannerism associated with trickery has come down to our time. As it was in Solomon's day, so it is today. That winking with the eyes indicates a lie or deceitful statement has been made for nefarious purposes. And now the secret of the dishonest act is known only to the one that winked his eye and the one to whom the wink was directed. This imagery occurs also in Proverbs 10 and 10, Psalms 35 and 19. According to Jacinius and Delich, the wink also signals the recipient to not interfere with the dishonest activity. If someone winks their eyes at you to indicate they are about to execute a dishonest transaction on another person, who's to say you will not be the victim of the next erroneous act? Be careful where trickery is involved, lest you become the one that is tricked. A person that does such a thing cannot be trusted. Solomon says they are worthless. Solomon's third and fourth characterizations describe this worthless man as signaling with his feet and pointing with his finger. The exact meaning of these phrases has been lost to time and history. However, we know from several sources the general intent. The Septuagint and other ancient sources help shape our understanding of the phrases. A worthless person develops a secret code using foot and hand signs to deceive others. They are skilled in the art of deception. One of the greatest running backs to ever play in the NFL was Barry Sanders. Barry was very hard to tackle because he would juke the defender. In other words, he would manipulate his feet to appear that he was going one way, but in fact would go the other. One of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play in the NFL was Tom Brady. Tom used hand signs to communicate pass routes to his wide receivers. The hand signs were in code so as to confuse and mislead the defensive secondary. Pointing at a linebacker, for example, might mean something completely unrelated to that linebacker. While these are innocent examples, they do serve to illustrate the point. The person that intentionally leads others astray through trickery for their own personal gain are said by Solomon to be worthless. If they will collude with you to mislead others, they will also collude against you when it serves their purposes. And now Solomon comes to the heart of the issue, so to speak. It is in fact a heart issue. The worthless person is so because he has a devious heart. Solomon describes his heart as perverted, and in the result is his heart plans evil. In scripture, the bowels are used to symbolize human emotion, Colossians 3 and 12. The brain is used to symbolize the human intellect, Romans 7, 25. The human heart is where the entirety of the inner man synchronizes into a single expression of being. God created the human heart to be good, Genesis 1, 31. What happens to cause it to become so corrupt that the result is said to be a worthless man. When the human heart is filled with good things, good experiences, good relationships, God's nature, God's word, the output is going to be good. As our graphic depicts, when the human heart begins to be corrupted by things such as bad family experiences, like broken home, bad influences, like hanging with the wrong friends, bad resources such as not God's word. Eventually the heart becomes broken and ultimately broken beyond repair. It is no surprise that such a person can only plan to do evil. Their whole existence is set on devising their next opportunity to hurt another person, to sow discord in society. Broken beyond healing. 
It happens suddenly. One bad choice too many, and there is no going back. The heart becomes dark in ways that no light will illuminate it. Friend, don't let this be your story. If you are exhibiting some of the characteristics that Solomon enumerated for us, stop the bleeding while you still can, else your end be sudden calamity. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. I hope as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.